and welcome to Let's Get Real. My name's Sue Eldridge and I'd love to introduce you to my friends here today. On my right we have the lovely Chris Larkin and on my left we've got Marge Russell and Alison Wilson. Let's get real. So what does that mean to us? What does getting real mean to you? It means being yourself, it means not being intimidated, just being who you are. Sometimes people don't know who they are. Huh. It's true. Loads of people in my, in my line of work are trying to find themselves. So I think as we go through these times together, we'll find out what that looks like. Yeah, that's true. And for me, it's just been a journey of finding out who I really am, because I always, even as a child, tried to be who I thought people wanted me to be. As I got older, it was being with the, you want to be in with the in crowd. Yeah. And that can be who you think of the in crowd at church, the most, quote, spiritual. Um, and you just find after a while, I don't know who I am. And so it's been a journey for me to find out who God says I am, how much I'm loved by him, no matter what I do, what I say, and that I live from his acceptance and not from other people's acceptance. And it's an absolutely wonderful journey. And I am a work in progress and That's I am true, enjoying sure. the journey, <laughs> even if at times it's painful sometimes because you discover that there are things about you that God says, can we get rid of that? Because it's not really you and I love you too much to leave you like that. Mm. But that is all about being real and learning to accept that you are loved unconditionally. And it actually changes everything. It does. It is, I think <clears throat> salvation obviously was a huge change everything moment for me, but it wasn't until I was in my 40s that, that I actually started believing who God said I was, and that changed everything because I don't know about you guys, but growing up in church, I felt very much that there was a certain way I needed to behave. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And I just, I just wasn't wired like that. And so I can vouch I can for that. Remember. Yeah, I can remember it. <laughs> Some right, ladies. ladies. Anyway, just Chris, <laughs> let's just ignore these women for a moment. But, but it's true. I, you know how people say you stuck out like a sore thumb. I felt, I felt that I was this throbbing sore thumb in any Christian circle. And it's like I loved God so passionately, but I wanted to wear short skirts. I wanted to wear black eyeliner and I still am, and, and, but I didn't fit in. And then in the world, I didn't really fit in because I passionately loved God and I had different standards. And so the whole life, yes, one, I didn't know who I was, but two, even if I did, I don't think I would have had the courage at that time to be that. And so you were saying in my 40s, I started realizing that this is okay. And it's so liberating and so freeing. And what it does, and, and I think this is one of the, the reasons that we want to do this show, is because we felt that if, if the four of us can be really real, talk about anything and everything, but be real and true to ourselves, then it might help somebody listening, somebody watching, yeah. feeling that they, they feel trapped in, in, in a personality or in a way of behaving that isn't them. We wanted them to feel free to. And one of the things I think affected me in terms of being real is not knowing what reality was. Yeah. So yeah. I was always living for the next thing because it would yes. be real when I, I get married. It would be real when yeah. I have a child. So yeah. never enjoying the moment, which is the only reality we've yeah, got, is this yeah, moment true. now. Yeah, um, and it's hard sometimes because we're conditioned mm. to look ahead and, and have vision and have destiny and have mm. dreams, but it's living in the moment that I struggled with. Mm. Yeah. From my childhood, <clears throat> I just uh, had quite a traumatic time and learnt to disassociate, mm. and church just reinforced that for me because yeah. when I went to church and said I wasn't all right and somebody prayed for me, the next time they asked me, I felt obliged to say, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling loads better, <laughs> when I didn't feel loads better at all. And all it did was just completely reinforce my disassociation. Was that Marge? Was that when Marge prayed for you that it time? It was Marge. <laughs> they are lying. I forgive you. They are lying. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I wouldn't have had the courage to pray for her back then, in case I got the prayer wrong. <laughs> yeah, and you did, because you prayed for me once, and it was shocking. <laughs> 
But it's true what she's saying, because even it's now true. I have to stop myself, because, you know, people pray for you, you've got a pain, and people pray for you, they go, for the pain gone. You know, well, let's pray again. And after a while, you, <laughs> you feel, feel like you're letting them yes. down. Yeah. Well, it's or you want better. some lunch and you think if you don't say it's <laughs> you're going to be there till Christmas. And again, you know, I've had to make myself think, come on, Marge, just say, no, it hasn't, but thank you for mm. praying. And I'll yeah. keep praying. And that's being real. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's being real. It's like not denying. It's not, yeah. it's not d denying that God's your healer. It's yeah. just that the reality is, that's not what's happened in right now. Moment. In this moment, in this that's moment. not what's happened. But I'm still believing and I'm still trusting. I think it's more a fear of making them feel disappointed. Yeah, that's and true. Again, that's, you've just got to be real. Yeah. yeah. And where do we get our perception of reality from anyway? Perhaps when we were children. Exactly. Yes. You know, when, when I was playing with my Cindy doll, I thought, you know, Cindy's life was one I'd quite like to live. Because <laughs> she had a horse and she had a caravan and she had nice clothes. So that became my reality. Because everyone grows up to have that, don't yes, they? Yes, but I didn't have a Barbie doll because, you know, Barbie was a tart. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Barbie was not a tart. I never had any of those. I was part of a spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Pippa and you... We were talking about it earlier. None of you have even heard of Pippa. That's she was your very petite. you something that was just cheap. Off it the was. Market. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be hundreds of people out there that remember their Pippa and Pete because she obviously had a very gorgeous husband. But the thing is, I think it is, I think it's how you're brought up, the, the films you watch, yes. the books you... I mean, yeah. I had to stop reading some novels because my understanding yeah. of getting married and uh, yeah. was <laughs> so far from the reality <laughs> <laughs> what it was all going to be like. And... We are, we are fed from a very, very early age of what life is going to be like, what, re what you're supposed to be like. It, it's like, in a way, this is also one of the reasons why I felt to do this sort of programme for God TV, because as Christians, we see pastors and we see preachers and we see these beautiful, stunning women that come on and share the gospel. And it's like, that, that's lovely and they're, they're who they are. But as long as we don't think that... What do you mean by we don't think? <laughs> I thought I was one of those you people. You are, and you, we're in awe of you, Alison. <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's like, actually, we're, we're real. We're just us. I mean, I know that that to be true because I can remember fairly recently, Tim and I went, were invited to go over to Ireland to preach and... Um, the husband came and picked us up from the airport and we went to a restaurant and the wife was coming to meet us at the restaurant. I'm sat at the restaurant. The wife comes through the door in the middle of the restaurant. She looks at me. She goes, oh, I'm so glad you're not thin. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but I actually, even though I, I think I blushed and thinking I've spent so many years trying to be, you have no idea. But I got what she meant. It was like for her, who did, you know, have issues with the weight, it was so lovely to see somebody that loved God and was passionate about God, but didn't fit a certain... Well, there's nothing wrong with being thin, Marge, and you, you embrace it. it. It's lovely. <laughs> but you, you do slim, understand. I think. Slim, Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I do. And, um, and, and the other day, as well, I was preaching and somebody came and queued up and, to, to say thank you very much, that was great. And what I loved most is that it came from somebody that doesn't look like a Barbie. And I'm like, oh, again, I've tried so hard to get that Barbie. Yet. <laughs> Did they look like Pippa? <laughs> <laughs> or Pete? I, I should have brought Pippa I think she looked like but... Cindy, who was a tart. <laughs> no Barbie. <laughs> but you know, I was, um, it's interesting what people perceptions are. I spoke so at a true. ladies' conference and afterwards a lady came and she said, do you know, I always thought you were up here, higher than the rest of us, but I just spoke about me, so that quickly disillusioned her. <laughs> but, um, and she said, but since you spoke, she said, I just realised you're one of us, aren't you? And she's really That's pleased. And I went, exactly I, it. yeah, I said, I am. I said, I go to the toilet the same as all of you. Oh. You know, this is me. Sorry, <laughs> But we're also meant to model for one another, disciple yeah. one another. And so there's that fine line, yes, isn't there? Yes, there is. There of, is. Of who we are does send a message to other people. Yeah. And being really That's important, I think, that we send that message. But we also understand that we're modelling. And, yes. and they may want to model themselves on certain aspects of us. Absolutely. And that's, that not, might not be a negative thing. No, and I don't think it is. Because Jesus be healthy, said, be actually. like yeah. me, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Follow me. Be like, be like I am. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's the good bits. Yeah. 
Yeah. You didn't have any bad bits? No, no she, I don't think she meant Jesus. <laughs> oh, stop it, then, can we? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I think, and I think that's an important, but especially when you are in some sort of role, it is that fine line of being real and being yourself, but understanding that people are looking. Oh, that's another whole yeah. thing. I, think I just want to display Jesus. Yes. I just want to be a healthy example of who He is yeah. and who you can be, yeah. and empowering others to yeah. be who they are. But not be who Jesus is like I am, but be the person He's made you to be. So going back to something Alison said about uh, early on about that we don't often even know who we are. So how can we be yeah. real and who we are? How do we find who we are? I think there's loads of things. Like Chris was saying, we, f we form our core view of the world and how we see ourselves in it from your earliest childhood and right the way through to your adulthood. And so who... So that's where we get lost then, because people tell us we shouldn't be like that. And then we thought we don't know sure. who we are. So I think a lot about just waiting before God and allowing Absolutely. the Holy Spirit to show you and sometimes change your DNA. Yeah. And I know it doesn't physically change, but spiritually we can change our yeah. DNA by just allowing our brain to actually let it bring up the things that we haven't dealt with. Sure. That's how we find out who we are sure. and who we are. Do you yeah. think that? Yeah. Yeah, and we don't. We shut it all away yeah. and we try and put on this facade and we put on this face and we put on, you know, our outside look. And and actually, what if we are broken? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that not all right? Yeah. As long as we're on a journey to get yeah. healed. Yeah. It's so okay. there's something in us that feels shame if we admit. Shame. And it's more than just a feeling of shame. There's something in us that says, yeah. I ought to be like That's those right. people around me. Yeah. And if we don't fit, you know, what's wrong with that? I think one of the things yeah. that sure. I've done on my journey is from the end of Psalm 139, where he says, search me and know me. Yeah. And it's just inviting Holy Spirit in to say, come and search my heart and show me what you see. And mm -hmm. so I don't go looking for stuff unless he shows right. me. And he's shown me wonderful things that he loves. But there are things, like I've said before, and he'll say, you know, let's, can we deal with this? It doesn't suit you, it's not you. Mm -hmm. And it's so kind and gentle. So mm -hmm. And one of the translations says, see if there's any wicked way. And in Strong's Concordance, that is mm -hmm. translated as hurt and pain or idle. So I'll go search me, Lord, is there any hurt and pain? Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't show me, then that's wonderful. But he'll show me stuff about me, which is great, but he'll show me stuff about him mm -hmm. as well, that's which right. is wonderful. So it just mm -hmm. starts to transform. You find out who you really yeah. are. Yeah, yeah I think you that's do. really true. And I know um, sort of on this journey that I've been on, I've started being very, very aware of my emotions and feelings. So if I, if I get a strong, angry reaction to something, I'll go, OK, that, that was weird. And I'll say, well, Holy Spirit, why am I feeling like that? And, and pretty much 99% a thought comes in my head, which I trust to be Holy Spirit. And he'll say, sometimes I can remember it was so brutal. And he said, it's all right, sweetheart, you're just acting like an orphan. Yeah. You need to just change your thinking. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I thought I was. But, but so being very aware of your emotions and going, why am I feeling this? Because often it might take you back to, actually, do you remember when this happened? When you, that? And, and I don't think you can maybe switch a switch to suddenly know who you are. No, it's, it's this gradual journey. understanding and being kind to yourself, mm, yeah. being kind. I think one of the things when, when everyone else is feeling something, or saying something, and you're thinking, no, that doesn't... Yeah. Actually, are you worth saying, I don't... I, I, I'm sorry, I think something completely different, yeah. or whatever. And I think that this topic is stuff... Stuff is something that, that will come up over the next few weeks as we uh, go into this, but... And there's another example <coughs> of... He, do, he loves us too much to leave us as we are. Yes. So that's right. being real isn't saying, well, this is me, take me or leave me. No. That's Absolutely. Really it's about point. being open to change. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and I think I think that's the wonderful thing about all four of us, that, that we are on a journey yeah. and we are, we are open to change. And maybe even over the course of these weeks, people will see us yes. changing from glory so. to glory. Anyway, thank you, ladies. But we're going to go on to um, have a look at this. Uh -huh. And afterwards, we've got a really exciting guest. Nancy Gowdy is going to be with us. So we'll see you in a few minutes.
Hi, my name is Nancy Gowdy and I've been running these unique spiritual health weekends for over two decades now. And you know something? I'm always stunned at the amazing things that God does through the weekends and how lives are transformed through it. If you're looking for more joy and more peace in your life, then do come along to the Spiritual Health Weekends. I know you will absolutely love it. When some people come to the weekend, immediately they book in for the next weekend because they enjoy it so much. Don't miss out. Do book in now. I would love to see you there and I know that you will thoroughly enjoy it. And welcome back to Let's Get Real. I am so excited to introduce Nancy Gowdy with us today. Um, Nancy, it's wonderful to have you, but before I ask you any questions, I do, I must just mention those stunning yes, boots. Absolutely. They are amazing. I'm a little bit in awe of them and you. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> they... I, I'm in awe that you actually walked on by yourself in those. I'd have to be carried on. So really? I'm I in awe of you. I love high heels. I've always worn them for a long time. As my, my husband said to me one day, you need to get into high heels and I was like don't know if I can walk in high heels but I tried it and you know some of them are very very comfortable these ones are really are they're gorgeous yeah they you keep amazing. telling us that <laughs> I'm not sure I believe it but they do look amazing it doesn't really matter um, whether you. they're comfy or not because you look stunning but oh, thank you. earlier before the break we were just chatting amongst ourselves about being real because that's what this program's called and that's something that's really important to us what does being real mean to you Nancy well it's very important to me too um, I feel that a lot of people tend to put on a mask depending on whatever yeah. situation they they are in um, and therefore you don't really get the, the true person yeah. and I always try to be myself wherever I happen to be so you this is me <laughs> accept me or not this is me this yeah. is who I That's am what we like. I love that and I, I haven't I haven't met you many times but the times that I have met you I feel as if I've really met you That's good. the real you so I so I think you're a fantastic guest to oh, have on let's you. get real I like you <laughs> Should we go? Should we go up and have... I have another friend. <laughs> I have another friend, Alison, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I can join in with the boots. But OK, Nancy, so for people that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you can probably tell I come from north of the border. I I'm love Scottish. it. Scottish. That's why we get on so well. Really? Yeah, I am Scottish. Are you really? Yes, I am. Wow. I was born in Aberdeen. Oh, wow. Anyway, but not, it's not about me today. <laughs> I was born in here. <laughs> And my husband and I were, both were born in the air, actually. Okay. And um, when I was 16, I started going out with this rather gorgeous guy. And uh, 18, we got um, engaged. 20, wow. we got married. Wow. Um, and about a number of years later, just maybe four or five years later, God called us very clearly into full-time Christian work. We started a band called Heartbeat. I remember wow. it. Do you remember it? Wow. Were you boogieing really? on the front row? <laughs> Showing your age now, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, and yeah, Heartbeat went for about 10 years, but we, it, in the first 10 years, we changed the name to NGM, right. which is New Generation Music. And um, we still do the same things. We still communicate our heart and passion for God through music, particularly. Sure. But also the spoken word. I go out and I do conferences and lots of different things like that too. So yeah. Wow. Thank you. And um, you had you had um, quite a tragedy a few years ago. Yes. Um, not too long ago, actually, my husband died in 2016. Um, he had, in fact, I've just written a book about the whole experience because all, we were praying for a miracle. And mm -hmm. the journey, actually, it lasted about 20 months. And the journey was miraculous, but we just didn't get the miracle we were looking for. Wow. 
and um, we were expecting him to be healed, we were expecting him to be well, um, and of course it, that didn't happen. And that's quite difficult, yes, really difficult. <laughs> because, you know, I, I was married for 43 years. Wow, you know, and, so tough. And loved him com you know, completely, utterly. Um, so he was my co-leader he you know he we founded the work of heartbeat and then ngm and we we did everything together um to suddenly not have him around was a real you know difficulty in my life and how how was i going to really accept what had happened because it wasn't what i was looking for it wasn't what he was looking for it wasn't what the i mean we had so many people praying for us that, that it, from all over the world and it wasn't what they were saying or what they were looking for when they prayed. And um, yeah, it was just... So how did you really navigate hard. your faith through that? Well, I, we had always said in our life, we will do whatever God tells us to do. We'll go whatever God tells us to go. Um, and when Ray died, and it was so unexpected because he was getting better. Wow. And wow. he was almost off all medication. Um, he had a driver in his, his arm and they were getting less and less and less. And then the, the last day came and they said to him, will we take your driver off today? He was only on the equivalent of half, uh, five mil, I should say, of, of uh, morphine. And that was all, there was nothing. <laughs> he was on no other medication. And he said, oh, do you know what? I'm really tired today. Could we just do it tomorrow? Um, but for him, that tomorrow never came. That night, um, I was with him all day and he was sleeping most of the day. Um, and basically, he just slept into the arms of Jesus. I, I wow. had a friend who cooked me a meal and said, um, she brought it around, I think around seven or around that time. I went downstairs to get the meal. I sat for 10 minutes, ate the meal, came back upstairs and he had gone. Wow. Um, wow. That leaves me with a problem, you know, how do I reconcile that with what I was believing for? I didn't understand what had happened. And it was like, God, where are you in all this? I mean, I, I prayed for Ray, I, I prayed for him to be raised from the dead. I, I did everything, I rebuked the spirit of death. Sure. I did everything you're taught to do mm. and it didn't make any difference. So that, that particular night I stood by the bed I remember it clearly, stood by the bed that, you know, Ray had died in. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't understand this. I do not understand what's just happened. Um, but I want to tell you, God, even although I don't understand it, I'm going to trust you. Wow. And I said, you know, there are things in life that we don't understand. There are things that will come our way that we will not understand what's happening. Why is this happening to me, God? Yeah. But it's at that point you have a choice, and I had a choice. Yes. And my choice was, God, I'm going to trust you through this mm -hmm. because I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand it, but mm -hmm. I know you, and I know my friendship with you and my relationship with you. And therefore, God, I'm, I'm able to trust you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's times like that that choices are, are, are really important. So, Real. Really. Wow. Yes, That's exactly. reality, isn't yeah, it? absolutely. You know, um, Nancy, I'm just really aware that there's going to be people watching right now that can so identify oh, with, yeah. with what you've just shared. Absolutely. Maybe not a husband dying, but something tragic. Maybe they've been praying, maybe they've been crying out to God and, and the opposite has happened. And I just, should we just take a few minutes? Would you mind just praying sure. for whoever, anybody that's out there that's, that's going... I feel that and maybe is disappointed with God or feel let down. Let, would you yeah, mind sure. doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, I just want to say thank you that you are with us yes. through every single thing that happens yes, in are. life. Thank you that no matter how difficult life becomes or you know, things that we just don't understand. Mm. Why has this happened to me? Why is this going on in my life? But Lord, at that point, I pray for whoever's listening right now yeah. that God, you yes, will help yes, them yes. to make the right choice, mm. that they won't reject you and turn yes, you away at that point, but Lord, they will bring you closer, even closer mm. to them. And I know from my personal experience, God, that you just surround those who are heartbroken and you just give us the mm. strength and the peace, God, to do things that we just never thought we would be able to do. And God, I know from experience, you can do that for others too. Mm. 
Mm. So I really <coughs> pray for that person or persons right now that you mm. would just be with them, be near them, help them yes. and direct them and give them that peace that passes all understanding mm. as they trust, Lord, in you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Can I just That's ask, great. it's when you Thank were saying you. that, you know, many people prayed and I'm sure people gave you prophetic words. Absolutely, yes. What was their response? How did they handle that? Because they've given yeah. you prophetic words and Absolutely. they've not come to pass. So I know that happens, does happen. And I just wondered, I've, never, I've always wondered, what is the response of them? Yeah. Well, there was many because what happened was when Ray got ill, I started posting on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, what happened was incredible because it just went worldwide. It was just like all of a sudden I had all these people on Facebook wow. commenting on my uh, thing mm. and people actually writing to us and emailing us and Facebook messaging us saying, I don't know you, but I, God has just called me to pray for you. Wow. And you know, people were, were coming back to God through the post wow. that I put on wow. Facebook. And actually someone gave their life to Jesus because of it. Be wow. you know, and so you're like, oh my word, that's incredible that God should use just my posting saying, yeah. this is what's happening in our life. This is you know, what God has that's done. Incredible. Would you pray for us? Um, so there was many leaders all over the world who prayed for Ray. And we all, you know, without a doubt, every one of us decided that this was, you know, God's purpose and plan for his life for that Ray would get well. But obviously he didn't. And I remember one particular guy who is, uh, well, he's an international leader all over the world. He wrote to me afterwards and said, Nancy, I do not understand this. Um, he said, and I had to go away by myself wow. with God and say, Lord, I don't understand why this has happened because I'm, I felt when I imparted something to Ray that actually, you know, that I felt like that when others have been instantaneously yeah. healed or set free mm. or whatever, and yet it didn't happen. And he was in a, at the time, he was in a house in America where um, he was staying with a medical doctor and he told them the circumstances of yeah. um, Ray's death. And the guy immediately, because he's dealing with cancer every day, yeah. and the guy immediately said, I can tell you, I don't know what happened here, he said, but I can tell you one thing, that guy did not die of cancer. He said he has wow. not died of cancer the way that normal wow. people die of cancer. And the guy who you know, was the international mm. leader suddenly thought, right, I understand now, because Ray had always said, um, Nancy, you need to know that I will not die a day too soon or a day too late. Wow. But if I do die, I want to tell you that cancer will not kill me, wow. but God will take me. And you know, wow. it just felt like that, that God had said, this is your time, Ray. Wow. And he, as I say, he just slept into the arms of Jesus. That's amazing. Wow. That's so, beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, must, that must have been such a comfort, actually. Absolutely. In a weird in a way, weird way, yeah. yes, it was, because I suddenly, everything that he had been saying for, for months and months, you know, was, was exactly what the doctor over there in America had said. I love so, that. I love that. I mean, sometimes that. we get, the thing is, sometimes we get slight explanations like yeah. that, and but at other times we, we don't, don't know. you know. I've been on the other side of that. So um, a friend that I met in the labour ward, we were labouring at the same time. Oh, really? <laughs> Bless her. And... Um, and I'd been witnessing to her about about the Lord, and uh, she got cancer when I, when our little girls were only seven months old. Oh, bless. And um, and I'd really felt that that the cancer wouldn't take her, and she would bring up her own children. And I'd gone and shared that with her, and and she was like, "All right, okay." And then I'd been witnessing and witnessing, and I'd been one day, and then I'd gone home, and the next day God said to me, go back, and I said, I can't go back, I'm gonna look like I'm stalking her, I'm gonna look like a right. <laughs> like you do wit. to me. Yeah, like <laughs> I do to you. But, yeah, but the tent on the garden, on the front garden's fine. Okay, um, fair enough. So, <laughs> um, so I went back and she said to me, do you know what, I was just saying to God, if you are real, then send Alison back. Wow. Wow. And so I'd gone back and I led her to the Lord. Wonderful. And um, um, the cancer went, but then it came back. Wow. You know, and, and she said, but you said I wouldn't die 
of that. And I said, well, I'm just praying, you know, I'm just believing for you. And, and we just prayed and everything. And, and she died. Yeah. Mm. And, and so I've been on the other side of that when I really felt yeah. that God mm. had said that. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I said to her, I have never meant to mislead you, but I just, that's what I'm praying and that's what I'd mm. really felt. And when I was talking to God, I was like, I can't see any answer to this mm. and about six months later I invited a husband over um, and the kids to play because uh, I'd given him a bit of time and then uh, and he starts talking to me about how he's on training for ministry mm. and I'm really? like but you're not a Christian and he said I saw Jesus come for her oh, he said I saw wow. him at the gate he said and then I saw him walk into the bedroom oh. and she put out her hand and she died and he said I know now wow. that doesn't happen, does it, for everybody? Wow. But I was just like, wow, that's wow. amazing. Because I'm saying mm, to God, that's, that's but the whole family could have got saved if you just healed yes. her. If you, don't you understand? Don't you understand I, that I've got this plan, <laughs> yeah. God, and, and you're not doing I my think plan? It's so, and it's so amazing. And yeah. the children got saved and that's the husband amazing. got saved. Wonderful. Um, and we don't, but we don't, we don't always understand. Know. No, we, and we don't. why should we? Our, yeah. our minds cannot Absolutely. fathom. Absolutely. The, how big he is, how great he is, and he knows the beginning yeah. from the end, and That's sometimes right. it's a mystery, and we have to Absolutely. embrace mystery. Yeah, Absolutely. and I don't believe that my friend died in order that they got saved, because no. God no, could have no, done no, it the no, other no, way. No. But it's out of terrible tragedy that he brings something well, amazing. always brings good out of it. That's, That's right. Thing. Romans yeah. 8, 28. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you Absolutely. quoting scripture? Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm even more in awe of you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't dare or make, make a mess of it. Thank you so much for sharing that, though. Can I really change the subject a bit? Because sure. um, uh, I've been told that you hold Spiritual Health Weekend. I do. Oh. Yes. So can you tell us what you mean by spiritual health? Because sure. that can mean so many different things to so many people. Well, we are all physical beings. You know that because you, yeah. you see the the the, um, the physical side of us but we forget a lot of people forget we're actually spiritual beings yes. as well like for instance a lot of people go and exercise i don't know if you guys exercise at all i do <laughs> you wouldn't notice it I do. I do i try and exercise three times a week but um a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on you know, the physical, physical fitness yeah. and so part of my weekend is actually being pampered physically but being toned up spiritually at the same time. So it's your intimacy with God, your, your passion for Jesus, your, your whole, you know, able to communicate with, with Father God, you know, all that kind of stuff is, mm. every bit of it is your spiritual health. Wow. So, so tell us a little one? bit about them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when is, when's the next one? The next one. The next <laughs> one's not on. till 2019, because I, we've just had 2018's oh. weekends, which, oh my goodness, absolutely, I mean, you were there, Sue. I went to one. It was absolutely one. amazing. So what happens um, on these weekends? All sorts of things, like, you know, there's, there are pampering treatments, you know, like you can get a facial or a back massage or whatever. Um, you can also, um, there's a, it's held in a four star luxury hotel. Oh. So, um, uh, let me tell you. It was hard for me to go, but <laughs> it you must know. have been awful. I'm so, I know. to sacrifice. Well, the thing was that years ago, and this is going back because I've held them 22 years now. Wow. So, Amazing. um, Years ago, way back, I was speaking in America and the Lord spoke to me and said, Nancy, I want you when you go back to the UK to begin to do a women's event. And I went, Lord, you have the <laughs> wrong person. Yes, yes, I don't yes. like women's events. Because at that point, they were being held in like, what we would call in Scotland, fusty, like conference centers, you know, yeah. where you had to make your own bed, where you had to, you know, wash oh, your own dishes. You know yes. what I mean? That type of thing. And that was my yes. whole thoughts yeah. on women's events. but second class, you know, yes, that type of way. Know. So God said to me, yes, but what if you had a plain piece of paper yeah. and you just wrote down exactly what you would like for a, for a women's event? And I thought, oh, well, I would hold it in a four-star luxury hotel. Oh, I, right. would, I would have, you know, pampering treatments. I would have, you know, a band that were really fantastic. They could lead worship, could also do songs. I, I, would, I would have 
you know, someone who could speak and really be communicating to today's society. I, I would have a banquet meal and have entertainment afterwards. I, I, I just went through a whole load of different things. And then the Lord said, well, go and do it. And I'm like, oh, right, OK. <laughs> so I went to a hotel in Bristol uh, and uh, I said, look, I'm Scottish. <laughs> I need a really good price. <laughs> so, so come on, I, I'm going to introduce to your hotel a whole load of women who would no, normally never come to a hotel for a conference like this. So give me your best price. And he did. And 22 years later, I'm still doing it, which is amazing. Oh, 22 um, years. I hold one in Preston in the north. And I hold one in, now in Windsor in the south. And this year, uh, we had 600 women come to it. It was amazing. We saw people give their life to Jesus, a, a, a medium uh, who was into crystals and tarot cards and all the rest of it, soundly converted. It was wonderful. Uh, we had people wow. healed. Ab it, when, right. when you saw her, yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. This woman who was in a wheelchair and also she occasionally got out of the wheelchair and used crutches. Um, she was running up and down the aisles, oh, completely on, healed. Honestly. It was fantastic. It was Another amazing. lady who couldn't like bend her knees was going up and down and up and down like this. It was incredible. Um, but the most important, I think, thing is that people all get closer to God yeah. and yes. they're transformed. Mm. You know, their life has just changed. And that's what I live for, to see people transformed and in every way, you know, and bring, bringing you know, like the entertainment and all the rest of it into the whole meal type environment is, is it means that it's, God affects every part of your life. It's yeah. not just your yes. spiritual so life, true. it's your emotional life, your so mental true. life, yeah. your physical life, every aspect of you. Um, so that's... Because that's we are body, soul and spirit. Absolutely. And one always affects the other. Absolutely. So I just love that idea. Yeah. And yeah. everything Nancy said, it was exactly like that. So that dream you had, that is the reality. It was, yeah. it was such a special, special time. And, and, I, and I think now there'll be details on the screen so that yeah. if anybody is wanting to book in for next year, I would so strongly recommend it. In fact, ladies, I, let's, I, let's I, I feel come, come, we come need to do it. it I was just thinking, fun. you know, you may too have a friend who went without you and didn't bother to invite <laughs> you. But well, we'll talk about forgiveness another week about that. <laughs> I, know, I felt I needed to check it out first, ladies, because I didn't want it to be foist, foisty. Foosty. Foosty. Yeah. I didn't want it to be foosty. I wanted to make sure you got the foisty. best. Foosty. It begins with F. And trust me, that I can was think good. of other words that begin yes, with F, I but I wouldn't have used them. them. So, so it really is good. So I would encourage you to book in. The other thing I just before we move on, is that I loved, is that you do a bursary. Yes, And I, do. Um, I just remember that you, you said, there was two people in the Preston one, you said one lady came up and said, this is the first time yeah. I've ever stayed in a hotel in my oh. life. Oh. And another lady who said, this is the first, I've never been on holiday. And she, to her, it oh, was holiday. So, so I think that's beautiful. So if anybody wants to, to, yep. to give so that other people can go, I'm sure the details will be on that's the screen excellent. as well. So. Absolutely. Just fabulous. So definitely get to a Nancy <laughs> Gowdy Spiritual Health Weekend. Mm. Excellent. Wonderful. So, so um, tell us a little bit about the mu your music and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Well, when my husband and I came into full-time work at, at the beginning, um, we were both in music. My husband was a drummer, I was a singer, and we prayed basically for four other people to come and join us, and we, that's how Heartbeat started. And um, so from there, we, it grew and it developed, and there was lots of other people involved in Heartbeat who were not necessarily into the music. They were in sound engineers, uh, we had a dancer, we had a youth workers, and so we changed the name to NGM, which is New okay. Generation Music. Right. But now we have a whole host of people who are artists, who work in, some, some work, now work in the mainstream, some work in the West End, some work in DJ land, um, all sorts wow. of things like that. But also we've got others who are working in the church, who lead worship at the church, who sing songs, um, and who really just communicate their faith. We work a lot with teenagers. Oh, so, great. Um, a lot of the churches don't know what to do yeah. with teenagers, and I always say, bring them to us, we love That's them. That's amazing. <laughs> and, what I love is, again, to see their lives transformed. 
and I've heard so it. many stories about people, they have to go through an audition, they have to go through an interview to get in. Obviously, they have to be a Christian in our line of work. And so we interview them and we you know, and audition them. And if they get through that, then they're in NGM. And I remember once God saying to me, there was maybe about like 80, 100 people in our um, in NGM at the time. And so in one of our church meetings, God spoke to me and said, Nancy, I want you to give an appeal for people to become Christians. And I said, I looked around the place <laughs> thinking, who's God seeing that I'm not seeing, <laughs> you know? And I said, Lord, everyone in here, as far as I know, they're all Christians. And he said, I want you to give an appeal for someone to become a Christian. And I'm like, okay, I've always said, whatever you say, I will do. So I got up there feeling foolish, <laughs> saying, look guys, this is a bit weird, but this is what God's told me to do. I want to just say, if there's anyone here who doesn't know Jesus and you know that you need to give your life to God, I want you to respond and come mm. to the front right now. Seven people, seven wow. people wow. gave their life to Jesus wow. in there, who were all accepted onto the team, who had all obviously lied. <laughs> <laughs> and one even told me afterwards that she was high on drugs when she came wow. to the oh my you know, audition and the interview. Wow. Um, you thought it was the joy of the Lord, didn't yes. you? <laughs> <laughs> and there and then, they, they all became oh, Christians. That's I amazing. Just think, praise God, how God sees our heart. That's amazing. And, yeah, that's and, amazing. And, and brings people to come to know them that's in so even amazing. that kind of a situation. That's you know? so, fantastic. Yeah. That's so exciting. Nancy, in the last few minutes that we've got, please just tell us about, tell us a, a little bit more about your book. That yeah. you, 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 I want you to tell us what it's called so that people can go out and buy it. They must. And a little bit about Love Esther. Yeah. Um, well, the book is called Our Greatest Adventure, and um, it's just been released. Wow. So just at the, the Spiritual Health Weekends was when it was released. It is on Kindle. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it from NGM store, Fantastic. that type of thing. But um, it's really, as Rob Parsons, he did one of the forewords for me. Okay. And he says, it's a love story. He says, it's a love story between a man and a woman, but it's also a love story between a man and his God. Oh, wow. and, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's talking about the hard times of life, but it's also saying about, you know, some of the funny things. I mean, it's, it's not all a book of no. going through grief. It's, it's a book about fun and, and laughter, even in the midst of hard yeah. times of life. And Love Esther is actually one of the last things my husband worked on before wow. he died because wow. we had done Love Esther, which is a musical, mm. and it toured the country in 2005 till about 2009. And then um, he wanted to update it and he wanted to bring it more up to this. Yes, the 20. Yeah, 20, whatever it is, 17, First, whatever, yeah. 2016 as he was then. And he did, wrote some new songs and he made the, the story even more complete than it was wow. before. And now, after he died, uh, I said to the Lord, Lord, this is going to cost me maybe about, I don't know, £50,000 to release this in terms of getting it out there. I haven't got the energy to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, within days, God brought in every penny for that. Come on. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And um, this, then we went ahead and released it and we, we did it a uh, tour in the autumn and now we're just about to go into a spring tour as well. That's amazing. Where it'll be, um, it's going to be in Northern Ireland, it's going to be in Preston, it's going to be down the south, near Southampton, wow. Easley down there um so yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. come to it yeah. where love will it, it be then um i don't have the information at the moment because it's just they're just securing the building for it but it will so be in march look online yeah look, look online, online. Yes. i i we at the, at the spiritual health weekend we we saw about an hour of it it was yes, spectacular really. so if you get a chance to oh, go wow. do it'll be fantastic well nancy it's been an Absolute pleasure and joy. In fact, I think we could carry on for about another hour yes. and a half, really. <laughs> Don't leave us! Um, it's been lovely, yeah. so thank you so thank much you. for enjoying us. And thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye! Bye. Bye. Bye.